Hey, Sylvie Perez here. Earlier this week, Google released a huge announcement letting the world know that they are gonna get rid of the broad match modifier match type. In today's video, I wanna deep dive on the announcement that Google made, and more so than that, I wanna talk about the strategies that I'm thinking of that you can implement in a post broad match modified being gone world so that you can still retain as much control possible to create profitable Google ad campaigns. Because you better believe that if it was up to Google, and this is what this is, is they want us to just use pure broad match and automated bidding. So without further ado, let's get into these changes. So on February 4th, 2021, which funny enough is my birthday, Google made the announcement that they want to help us advertisers make it easier to reach the right customers on search. I'm going to link to this announcement down below. So if you haven't had a chance to look at it, you can look at it in more detail. And basically what Google wants to do is they want to help us simplify our keyword match types. They want to help simplify our life so that way we can reach the right people when they're actively searching on Google. That's what they say at least. And what they're proposing is, is they want to get rid of broad match modifier because there was a lot of overlap between phrase match the way it is now and broad match modifier. So they said, hey, let's get rid of broad match modifier. Let's update the way phrase match currently works and let's make phrase match work similarly to broad match modifier. Now, here's the thing. This is what Google wants. They want us moving forward to have exact match for precision, so to reach those very specific searches. They want us to use broad match for reach, meaning pure broad because broad match modifier is gone. And then they want us to use phrase match as a balance between both. So you can get some reach and then you can also get that precision because now phrase match is gonna be more like broad match modifier in the sense that it can trigger for different searches outside of just what's within the quotation marks. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what an example here that they used. So basically, let's just say you have the keyword here, this is the example Google uses, is moving services NYC to Boston, right? So this is the phrase match version, and then the broad match modified version would be plus moving plus services plus NYC to Boston, right? So here is an example of how they're gonna start matching our different queries with this new match type, the new version of phrase match. So for example, affordable moving services NYC to Boston. Before, if someone searched affordable moving services NYC to Boston, this would be triggered for phrase match and it would be triggered for broad match modified because they have all the words that we specified. Now after this search will still be triggered with the updated phrase match. Here's another one, NYC corporate moving services to Boston. See, NYC corporate moving services to Boston would not be triggered by phrase match, but it would by broad match modifier. So now moving forward, they're saying this will also get triggered by the updated phrase match because it, it's able to widen its targeting essentially to be able to pick up those relevant related searches. So basically the new phrase match is gonna be a lot more based on machine learning to be able to use Google's intent data to understand the context of what people are searching for and based on that context, matching it with the phrase match. And then last but not least, moving services Boston to NYC. Since this is not relevant to the keyword that we're trying to show up for, because we want to show up for people looking to go from New York to Boston, not Boston to New York, you won't show up for this with the new phrase match, but you would have shown up with this with the current or old broad match modifier. So basically they want to give us a balance between reach and precision. And on paper, this sounds awesome, like totally for it. But here is my opinion in theory. And it's, they say it on the page too. So it's, it's not even like it's like a conspiracy theory or anything like that. So you can see here, for example, they're saying moving forward, setting your campaign up for success. So one of the, the best parts about broad match modifier, yes, you can pick up for a lot of things, but the beautiful thing about it was, is you get complete visibility for those specific types of searches you want, and then you also have control because you can choose which words must be in the search. And then by building your negative keyword list, you can really build a very strong campaign with broad match modifier keywords and a very strong negative keyword list. So you're getting that visibility, but you're also showing up for the right kind of things. So now moving forward with this new phrase match, my opinion and my theory is, is that 
Google is saying it's going to be like broad match modifier, but I have a, a theory that this new phrase match is going to significantly cut off the amount of clicks and lead volume that we're getting from our current broad match modifier campaigns. And if you look on this page, you can literally see here in their setting you up for success that they say, consider using broad match with smart bidding if you're concerned about losing coverage. Broad match with smart bidding helps you reach more relevant searches that meet your performance objectives. In my opinion, that's why we have this change is because Google wants us to use pure broad match so we can show up for as many things remotely possible and then smart bidding so they can be in control with our bids. And there's nothing wrong with that. This can work and it can kill. I have campaigns where I'm using pure broad match, but I'm targeting like a specific audience. So it's pretty laser focused and it works, but you have to have a really strong negative keyword list. Now here's the downside is Google made this change, which is okay, fine. I, you want to make our life easier. Sure. But you reduced the amount of search terms that we can see in our search terms report because of privacy. So you want us to use broad match. We're going to show up for all these different searches and we can't even see all the searches that we showed up for to be able to build our negative keyword list to exclude them from our campaign. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the proof is there, right? Like just let's see this as it is, right? They want us to be more broad. They want us to open up our targeting and open up our bidding, which is fine. How do we deal with this, right? Because this is the reality moving forward is you better believe Google, Facebook, all these platforms, what they want is they want automation to take control of everything. And they want the advertiser to just press a couple of buttons and then they're fully in control. And if you don't think that's what these platforms want, you're kidding yourself. Like that's what they want, right? They want to be in control and that's fine if their machine learning technology and everything like that can produce us the results we want. That's the future. That's where we're headed. But right now moving forward with this change, and by the way, definitely read this article, check it out in the description box down below. How do we go from here? And here's some thoughts that I have. So in a post broad match modified world, I'm thinking because phrase match, again, you're going to have a, I'm, a, I'm assuming here, this is a guess, but I'm pretty confident in this is you're going to have a reduction in click and lead volume with this new phrase match match type, despite it matching similar to broad match, like your visibility is going to tank and Google's kind of hinting it to you by saying, if you're concerned about losing coverage, meaning you're going to lose coverage <laughs> with the new phrase match. So my hypothesis moving forward is in a post broad match modified world is it's going to be very, very important for us moving forward from the get go to separate campaigns by match type. So getting in the habit for those of you that are newer to Google ads, if you're not used to having a lot of campaigns in your account now more than ever, it's going to be important for you to get used to it. And I believe moving forward, we're going to have to get in the habit of separating campaigns by match type from the get go. So one campaign would be an exact match version and then a phrase match version and then a broad match version. I recommend that you start laser focus first with the exact and the phrase match, build your negative keyword list first. And then once you're ready to expand because you've lost volume in terms of leads and clicks and you really want to expand reach, then you can create a pure broad match version. But don't just create a pure broad match version. Of course, have that negative keyword list you you applied into that campaign that you built up from the phrase and exact, but make sure to use automated rules on that pure broad match campaign to regulate the spend and cut off the bleeding, so to speak, if you know, you're just blowing out your budget on certain keywords. So that's kind of my thought process. And then of course, in a post broad match modified world, it's going to be so important for us to proactively add in negative keywords. And by proactively, I mean, just thinking about negative keywords that you don't want to show up for just by yourself or from ideas, talking with friends or whatever the case might be. Cause you have to remember your search terms report is limited. So you're not going to be able to see everything. So now you got to just start thinking proactively. Like what are bad searches? I don't want to show up for like free. Oh, am I blocking free yet? You know, you got to start thinking about these things proactively and reducing the probability or possibility to even show up for those things. So that is what I'm thinking in a post broad match modified world. I honestly think moving forward, we'll be okay. I'm not really too worried about it in the sense of, you know, our campaign performance is going to tank or anything. I just think now moving forward, 
it's going to be so important for us to separate campaigns by match type use automated rules if we do have a pure broad match campaign but we got to make sure we have a really solid negative keyword list and then of course proactively adding in negative keywords negative keywords have always been important but now with search terms being reduced and google forcing us to move towards more open keyword match types and automated bidding have you tried creating an ad recently you're going to see that they force you to use a responsive search ad and then you have to dig to find an expanded text ad like the clues are here you know what i mean like they want us to move towards automation so in this automation post world separating campaigns by match type will allow us to still retain some level of control and then we can start more tailored more specific and then when we're ready for it we can go broad if we need to increase volume of leads and volume of clicks and so be it in sales and all that good stuff just making sure that we're using the auto bidding the automated rules and we are using our negative keywords to cut off bleeding. Hope this video was valuable. As always, I post a lot of content on digital advertising and lead generation. So if you like this kind of stuff, definitely check out these two videos here. If you can give the video a thumbs up, that'll help me get this video ranked higher in the search engines. And if you like content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel for future videos. And also go ahead and join the Google Ads Pro Facebook group and get access to exclusive live trainings and video series that I only post in the group and really connect with awesome Google advertisers that are just looking to generate leads and attract clients online with Google Ads. So without further ado, I'll see you next week. Have a great one. Take care.